Hello viewers and welcome to my channel English is Shushanta. Today in this video we are going to talk about the wonderful poem that is the call of spring. This poem is written by Sarojini Naidu. Now this is one of the greatest nature poems written by Sarojini Naidu. Now Sarojini Naidu she is called the night angle of India. She is very famous for her creativity for her rhythm in the poem. And she is called night angle of India. It is because as a night angle sings songs and it is very sweet. In the same way, if we read the poems written by Sarojini Naidu, we can have one kind of rhythm, one kind of pattern in the poem. So the poems, the recitations of the, all the poems written by her give her, you know, uh, give us a wonderful kind of sonora sound, wonder kind, wonderful kind of mellifluor sound. So without wasting time, let's start our video today. So I will explain each and every line of this particular poem. I hope this poem will be very much interesting for all of you. So without wasting time, let's start. So before going to the main topic, that is the, the call of spring, the main poem, we will see something about Sarojini Naidu. Please open your book. Sarojini Naidu uh, born in the year of 1879 and died in the year of 1949 and was a poet and a freedom fighter. She is known as the Night Angle of India because of the musical quality of her poetry. I have already told you, she has given us, she has contributed lots of poetry uh, in the Indian English literature. Now among them, you know, all the poems actually have some sonorousness or some uh, musical quality. So the call of spring that is we are going to read today that is also one kind of you know musical poetry. Reach with imagery that means uh, imagery what is imagery? Imagery is the use of sense impressions from the varied worlds of perception to view by a particular emotion or theme. So imagery this kind of thing actually it is one kind of you know sense impressions like how many senses we have we have five senses so so if suppose I am looking at something, suppose I am looking at the light, so it is the visual imagery. If, suppose I am listening any songs, so it is the audible imagery like that. Okay, auditory imagery. And emotions. In the Bazaar of the Hyderabad and the Indian weavers are some of her popular poems. Okay, so these two popular poems are very famous. Huh? And uh, like in the Bazaars of Hyderabad, another one is that is Indian weavers. So now without wasting time, let's start our video today that we will... Uh, analyze, explain and also elaborate each and every line in the poem. So let's start. The call of spring. So the call of spring, so the very uh, title itself tells one kind of figure of speech. What is that? That is called actually personification. Because spring is, spring is a season, it does not have any life. And personification, what is personification? Personification is a figure of speech. So you can write the word personification, personification. Now what is personification? Huh. Personification is a figure of speech in which uh, a non-living thing is given human qualities. So spring is a season, it does not have any life, but we are giving human qualities to the spring because it can call us. Therefore, it is called personification. So next, and one, uh, the adjective form of spring is called bharnal. So if somebody asks you how, how are you enjoying this spring season, you will tell that we are enjoying the bharnal beauty. Okay, bharnal beauty meaning beauty of bharnal Varnal beauty meaning beauty of spring season. Varnal beauty. It's a very beautiful word, Varnal beauty. So now we will move to the uh, main text. Let's see. So it is one of the nature poems I have already told you. So let's start. Children, my children, the spring wakes anew. So the first, uh, you know, lines of the poems addresses the children and the children are requested to wake up. Okay. Like the spring season comes with one kind of rejuvenating attitude, one kind of, you know, refreshing, one kind of renewal attitude actually. And calls through the dawn and the daytime for flowers like and fleet footed maidens like you to share in the joys of its playtime. That is very much important. What is that? And calls through the dawn. <laughs> so the spring will awake, of, uh, you know, surely and you, it will come with lots of refreshment as well as the spring must hmm, call through the dawn. Dawn is the beginning of the day actually and the daytime. So that means hmm, the, the wonderful call of the spring will start. Uh, from the daybreak and it will go up to the data and night time actually understand so all through the day we can enjoy the wonderful calls the wonderful musics of the spring season why 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 do you need this kind of thing because the flower like and fleet footed now what kind of figure of speech used here it is alliteration okay alliteration because here it is called alliteration in this poem it is called alliteration because here so please take a screenshot alliteration because here which sound is repeated here f sound is repeated like flower like and fleet footed what is now maidens maidens who are called maidens maidens are the 
unmarried girl so you please write down all the words means what i'm telling you I, maintenance meaning unmarried girls got it so flower like so girls are like flowers they are very much beautiful as well as fleet footed fleet footed meaning very swift footed so when we are like uh, like uh, when we are in a childhood phase, stage we go from here and there we don't feel any kind of you know lack of energy in our body but now we we become very much tired after doing something but in the childhood days we don't feel any kind of tiredness like that okay and like you to share in the joyous or pits play time understand so uh, like you know these maidens these unmarried girls are there to join and really enjoy the wonderful season the vernal beauty the vernal charm that is always spread there in the environment in this particular season now we will move to the next danger <coughs> Over hillside and valley, through the garden and grove, such exquisite anthems are ringing, where raptures, bulbul, moina, and dove, the carols of welcome are singing. That is very beautiful. So now, one, you know, I told you already that this spring season has called. That means spring is a master of some music. Now, what are the musics all about? Means from who, what are the sources that means actually give us uh, the musics that are there. There are lots of bars are there and they are the singing birds so the singing birds make the vernal beauty more attractive okay so look at the line over the hillside so over the hillside over the valley over through the garden and also the grove okay now garden and grove which kind of figure of speech is used here again it is alliteration because here which sound is repeated here g sound that is g sound is repeated here over such exquisite anthems exquisite meaning stunning more beautiful wonderful mind blowing and anthems meaning songs actually musics so the music produced by the when produced by the birds are very beautiful they are very mind blowing they are attracted too much while rap rapturous rapturous meaning euphoric musical rapturous meaning musical when the musical bulbul moina as well as dubs these are the all singing birds and you know are singing the carols of welcome now carols is uh, actually it is the songs that is sung in the christianity so it is considered to be the holy songs actually so when the uh, all the birds like moina bulbul as well as the uh, dub bird these are the birds when they are seen singing the birds singing the wonderful songs in this vernal beauty in the vernal season okay so the entire atmosphere looking like festival actually like uh, the carols are being sung hmm, and everybody is enjoying and doing all kind of things that is called uh, this one is called carols actually singing okay next i know where the ivory lilies unfold now ivory li lilies lilies is one kind of flowers actually and that are ivory the color of the lilies flower are white what is and they are unfold the poet is telling us that the poet knows very well it is very much you know known to the poet that the color of the flowers that lilies flowers are white and they are seen blooming okay they are seen flowering they are seen like flourishing actually in brooklets now what is brooklet brooklet are considered to be the small rivers it is one kind of watery body actually half hidden in sages now what is sages sages is water side plant what is sages water side plant so in the water side plants actually beside the water side plants there is a brooklet there is a small river so in that small river the wonderful you know white colored the heavenly beautiful uh, you know lilies flowers are seen flourishing next and the air is aglow now again air is aglow which sound is repeated here here the a sound is repeated here again which kind of figure of speech is used here it is alliteration so again this is called one alliteration that means it is one kind of figure of speech in which same sound is repeated say here which sound is being defeated here a sound here a sound is being defeated with the blossoming gold with the blossoming gold meaning with the flourishing golden color actually understand that so the air is also aglowing the air is also flourishing the air is also uh, full of light it is fluorescent it is glamorous the air is also glamorous with the beauty of the spring season now can you guess what is the you know beauty of this particular season what is the charm of this particular season that is spring season spring season has everything to bloom its beauty and the poet is really attracted and mesmerized to see this beauty of the uh, spring season and therefore the poet is really very much happy to paint down all the feelings whatever she has experienced in our life and now she has given this wonderful contribution to us and we can enjoy the vernal beauty in through and in the poem next of thickets and hollows and hedges now what is hollows hollows are nothing but you know one kind of hole is there that is called hollows so of thickets thickets meaning where 
plants and bushes all these things are there that is called thickets actually so in your book all the what meanings are already there please uh, look at your book i am telling you the meanings also so in exam you can write your books meaning as well as you can write the meanings whatever i am telling to you and hedges also now what is hedges hedges is the boundary formed by closing growing shrubs so especially this is the place actually this is the boundary that is full of shrubs i know where the dragon flies glimmer and glide okay so the poet again telling the poet has more knowledge about the nature that is the poet knows very well dragon flies it is one kind of flies actually dragon flies are very much big by nature therefore they are called dragon flies that makes noise also when they fly and they glimmer now what is glimmer glimmer meaning sign and glide also that means they move from here and that will take that what is that means as you can see that the dragon flies are showing its own beauty understand so dragon flies the other the uh, you know the singing birds the brooklets and all these things are the parts of the nature okay and they are seen flourishing their beauty in the season called spring therefore spring is considered to be the one of the greatest seasons in the world and spring is a season that the poet has lots of uh, you know good feelings about okay so here glimmer and glide which figure of speech used here here again alliteration is used because here g sound is repeated next and the plumes of wild peacocks are gleaming plumes meaning what hairs actually okay the you know the what i will tell you the back part the hairs of the back parts actually that is called plumes the plumes of wild peacocks are gleaming wild peacocks meaning the peacocks cannot be controlled the peacocks are seen in jungles in the forest therefore they are called wild peacocks the wild peacocks plumes are seen gleaming seen signing seen glamorous gleaming meaning uh, you know signing next where the fox and the squirrel and the timid fawn height and the hawk and the heron lie dreaming so here the fox are also there squirrels are also there timid fawn timid meaning frightened uh, suppose i'm telling as uh, you said is timid that means if something comes if something happens to me i get very much frightened i am very much scared that is called timid so here is always timid as you know if you go to here here will be it may go to the, the unconscious state also so therefore here is called timid so here also when something happens to the here here uh, tries to take you know immediate shelter actually hmm. the hawk and the heron lie dreaming and the hawk bird that is the birds of prey and also heron bird that is uh, also you know one kind of bird they lie dreaming because they are seen they are taking rest and they are taking rest as well as while they are taking rest they are dreaming together actually the last stanza we have the art is assigned again which kind of figures is used here here alliteration is used because here a sound is repeated so the art is assigned like a hummingbird's wing now here simile is also used why because here the art is art is also here simile now simile is one kind of figure of speech what is that that is uh, in which two things are compared together and the comparison is very much clear so here the art is compared to the hummingbird's wings hummingbird's wings are very much colorful when the sunlight falls on the birds wings in the same way the art in the spring season is also looking very much colorful so therefore there is a direct comparison between the art and the, as well as the hummingbird's wings next and the sky like kingfisher's feather okay again it is similar because the sky is greatly compared to the kingfisher's feathers oh come let us go and play with the spring like glad hearted children together okay oh come so the poet is telling here oh come the poet is addressing everybody to join and enjoy the wonderful the internal the extrinsic the exquisite beauty of the nature okay of the nature during the spring season during the vernal season actually oh let us go and play with the spring like glad hearted children together okay like the poet is addressing everybody to go and enjoy the wonderful beauty of the nature in the spring season so the poet is telling that as Hmm, glad children has a happy children are there they are always ready to enjoy the nature in the spring season we should also go and join and really suck the intrinsic beauty of the nature that is always there around us in this particular season so i hope you really enjoyed this poem this is really enjoy and I, I i really love this poem i hope there is no confusion about it thank you have a great day